Hello students and welcome to my channel Maths Hub. So I, Dr. Tanya Bose, will be talking about the properties of Fourier transforms in this video. So particularly in this video, I'll talk about the Parseval's identity for Fourier transform. So those of you who haven't watched my previous videos, do watch them to understand the concept of Fourier transforms and the other properties of Fourier transforms that I have discussed in my previous videos. So here, let us first focus on the Parseval's identity for Fourier transform. Now in Parseval's identity, we say that whenever we have two functions, fx and gx, and their Fourier transforms are given by f alpha and d alpha, then according to the Parseval's identity, we have minus infinity to infinity f alpha g alpha d alpha is equal to minus infinity to infinity fx gx dx. Right. So here bar is just denoting the complex conjugate. You can assume that the two functions are different to each other. Right. So now when both the functions happens to be same, that means fx and gx are equal to each other, then the same formula reduces to on the right hand side instead of fx gx, we will have fx whole square. And in, on the left hand side, instead of f alpha g alpha, we will get f alpha whole square. Right. Now, you must be thinking that where do we use these Parseval's identity? There are many typical integrals in definite integrals in plus 2 that you will not be able to solve very easily, right? So, here, using this Fourier transform tool, we can easily calculate the values of those definite integrals, right? I'll show you some questions where we are applying it. So, now, this was the Parseval's identity for Fourier transform. So, similarly, we have formulas for Parseval's identity for Fourier cosine transform and Fourier sine transform also. So what are the changes when we move on to the Parseval's identity for Fourier cosine transform? So in case of Fourier cosine transform, first change is that you know that whenever we are working in Fourier transform, the limits are from minus infinity to plus infinity, right? But whenever we are working on Fourier cosine transform, if you remember the first lecture, in that case, we assume the function to be even. So our domain changes. So the domain is now from 0 to infinity. So there will be two functions, fx and gx. And their Fourier cosine transforms are given by fc alpha and gc alpha. So we have the result 0 to infinity integral fc alpha gc alpha d alpha is equal to 0 to infinity fx gx and d. Similarly, if the functions happens to be same, that means fx is equal to gx. In that case, we can plug the two functions as same functions and we can write fx whole square on the right side and we can write here fc alpha whole square. Right. So we have a similar result for Fourier sine transform also. So in Fourier sine transform, we say that if there are two functions fx and gx and their Fourier sine transform. So this is an error here. So if the Fourier sine transform is given by fs alpha and gs alpha, then 0 to infinity fs alpha gs alpha d alpha is equal to 0 to infinity fx gx and dx. Right. And similarly, whenever we have the two functions to be similar to each other, the left hand side reduces to fs alpha whole square and the right hand side reduces to fx whole square. Right? Now, let us try to see some applications of these Parseval's identity in the questions. So, let us look at the first question. You have to find out the Fourier cosine transform of fx equal to e to the power minus x. And then you need to apply the Parseval's identity for cosine transform and you have to evaluate the value of this integral, right? So, to move with, I have already calculated the Fourier cosine transform in my second video on Fourier cosine transform. So, where I have used the function e to the power minus ax. So, whenever the function is e to the power minus ax, in that case, we have calculated the Fourier cosine transform to be f of fx is equal to, do refer my video and you will find that we have done this problem. This is a upon a square plus alpha square, right? So do check my video on this. So now in this case, if you correlate the question with this function, our function f of x is basically e to the power minus x, right? So that means you are substituting e as 1. So the Fourier cosine transform f of fx is equal to under root 2 by pi 
1 upon 1 plus alpha square. Right? So, I am not wasting time in calculating this. You can easily check it. Right? Now, you have to apply the Parseval's identity. If you check the Parseval's identity, there were two identities. One when the functions were distinct, fx, gx, and one when the functions were same. So, we had fx whole square. Right? Now, how will you understand that where we have to apply which identity? Since it is cosine transform, so it is clear we have, we have to apply the Parseval's identity for cosine transform. Now, second thing, out of the two formulas, which formula you need to apply, that will be determined with the help of this integral that has been told to evaluate. Right? Now, you can see that in the integral, the denominator terms carries a square term. So, whenever you have a square term, so you will use always the squared formula. So, what is the squared formula? The squared formula says that 0 to infinity, fc alpha whole square, d alpha is equal to 0 to infinity, fx whole square, d. Right? So, wherever you have a square in the formula, you will always use the squared formula. So, now you know the value of the function and you know the value of fc alpha. So, what are we going to do? We are going to substitute the values here. So, we have 0 to infinity. So, this was fc fx. So, the value is root 2 by pi, 1 upon 1 plus alpha square whole square d alpha. And on the right hand side, we have 0 to infinity. What is fx? It is e to the power minus x. And then we have a square d. Right? Now, this integral is easy to calculate. So, this can be written as 0 to infinity e to the power minus 2x dx. And now when you calculate the value of this integral, it is e to the power minus 2x by minus 2 limits from 0 to infinity. So this will result into e to the power minus infinity is 0 and e to the power 0 is 1. So you will get minus 1 by minus 2. So negative sign will go. Root 2 by pi can be taken out and you can shift it to the right hand side and that will become 0 to infinity d alpha upon 1 plus alpha square whole square is equal to pi by 4. Right? Now just compare the answer that you have calculated and what was told to calculate. You can only see that the change is in the variable alpha and x. So whenever you are working with a definite integral, the variable doesn't matter because you finally put in the values of the limits. Right? So you can write this as that this is simply e equivalent to 0 to infinity dx upon you can just change the alphabets, alpha with x, so you will get a square here, and this is equal to pi by 4, right? So, if you just check this integral, it would be very difficult to solve otherwise. So, with the help of E transforms, we can calculate it very easily in just two steps, right? Okay, so I hope you have understood this question, and now let's move on to another question on Parseval's identity, and let's see how to solve it. So, we have to apply Fourier cosine transform to the function f of x as e to the power minus ax. And then we have to use the Parseval's identity for cosine transform and we have to show this integral, right? So, let us try to solve it. So, when we solve it, I am not going to calculate the Fourier cosine transform. So, you can just refer to my videos on Fourier cosine transform and just check out. How did we calculate the Fourier cosine transform of e to the power minus ax? So that is similar to root 2 by pi a upon a square plus alpha square. Right? So this is the value that we obtained. Now we have to apply the Parseval's identity and we have to evaluate this integral. Right? So in this integral, you can see that now it is not containing a square term. Right? So there are two different terms, but the terms are similar to each other. So, when you are not containing a square term, you will always use the first formula. So, the first formula says 0 to infinity, fc alpha, dc alpha, d alpha is equal to 0 to infinity, fx into gx, dx. Right? Okay. Now, we have fx and we have fc alpha also. Now, what would be gx? Right? If you look into the integral that you need to calculate, it is x squared plus a squared and x squared plus b squared. So, can you just correlate and see that what could be the function gx? 
we can see that the gx function has to be e to the power minus bx, right? And then if dx is e to the power minus bx, so what would be gc alpha on similar lines? It would be root 2 by pi b upon b square plus alpha square, right? So now we have all the functions with us. We need to evaluate the functions and we just need to substitute it back in this integral. So 0 to infinity, what is fc alpha? fc alpha is root 2 by pi a upon a square plus alpha square. gc alpha is root 2 by pi b upon b square plus alpha square. And we have b alpha integration here. And then 0 to infinity, fx is e to the power minus ax. gx is e to the power minus bx dA. Right? Let us see what we can take out common. So I can take out 2 by pi and also ab along with it. And we have 0 to infinity d alpha upon a square plus alpha square, b square plus alpha square. Right? This is the right hand side, sorry, the left hand side. And on the right hand side, both the terms are exponential and there is a multiplication sign between them. So I can easily take the exponents sum and that would be the sum, right? So that will turn out to be when you take the integral a to the power minus a plus bx upon minus a plus b and the limits from 0 to infinity. So that will give us, obviously the numerator will become minus 1 due to the lower limit. And we will have minus a plus b in the denominator. So minus sign will go off and you will get the integral d alpha upon a square plus alpha square, b square plus alpha square as you can take this constant on the right hand side. So that will become pi by 2ab into a plus b. Right? And now according to the given integral, you can always change the variable so that would be dx upon you can change alpha to x so it will become x square plus a square x square plus b square and on the right hand side we will have pi upon 2ab into a plus b right so again you can see that this complex definite integral was solved very easily using the Fourier for sine transfer right okay so I'll give you another question as an exercise. I'll just explain you how to do it. Now here the question says find the Fourier transform of the function. So first of all for this function calculate the Fourier transform of this function and then apply Parseval's identity to show this integral. So again in Fourier transform we have done two formulas. So if you check the question that has to be evaluated it contains a square in the integral. So you will use the second formula for integration. So there you can apply the formula minus infinity to infinity f alpha whole square d alpha is equal to integration minus infinity to infinity fx whole square dx. Right? So according to the question, you must get your f of fx as 1 by root 2 pi into sine alpha by alpha right this term must be present maybe you get some other constants also so this should be your answer to your Fourier transform and then you can apply it here and then you can calculate the value of this integral right so do let me know that whether you were able to solve this problem in the comment section and if you're not able to get it still let me know so that i can explain the answer to you right so that is all with our tables identity so thank you so much and do subscribe my channel to get the latest updated video and believe in yourself, you can definitely do it. Have a nice day.